Good morning. Hope you're having a wonderful weekend. So we are going to be doing some cleaning up out here in the backyard. Uh, we got a lot of sections that the weeds are really starting to kick up. Uh, might need to get the grass on this side mowed down a bit. But I also need to get this brush cut down. Uh, again, I'm, we're going to be cutting that down. Um, I'm just going to be placing it uh, over here where I've been putting a lot of the other scraps and such that uh, for them to break down and use that for future bottom filling in our bags. Don't really have too many more bags that we need to do. I do have some stuff that needs to come out though. For example, cabbage, the cauliflower. So a lot of this is really bolted. So um, unfortunately, I won't be really using this. I do still have a, a usable head in here, so we'll be getting that. Um, our broccoli, because uh, it kind of warmed up real quick. I mean, we were staying in temperatures, you know, in the 60s and stuff, and it was doing okay, and then all of a sudden it jumped up to 85 degrees. It's a little cooler today, but during that period, the broccoli just decided, you know what, it's time to, time to go to seed. So it bolted pretty hard, so unfortunately we won't get broccoli this year, but that was another one that I started a little late. Uh, our cabbage, I'm gonna go ahead and pull as well. Some of it has uh, been victim to some pretty severe pest damage. But fortunately, I do actually have a small one here uh, that we'll actually be able to use. It's not going to get very big, and I think part of it's because I have more than just one little cabbage in here. Um, but I'll at least get the one. And then our carrots have just kind of really taken off. I probably should have thinned them out, and I may still do that at some point here. But the greens on them have just gotten massive. So I'm pretty happy about that. Our spinach is starting to bolt. Um, we did get some of that. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's going to seed as well. Um, our bread romaine is looking amazing at the moment though. And then potatoes are starting to come up. Uh, the red tomatoes are really, uh, coming through. As are the uh, Adirondack Blues. Now the Yukon Yellows are starting to come up. And then of course my tomatoes that I planted last week. There's Some of them are still uh, worse for wear, but they're starting to come up here. And we got a few other things that we're gonna be doing. So let's get to cleaning this backyard up. When you're using a chainsaw, eye protection, ear protection. Just saying.
right, so let's talk about the uh, brush slash weed pile that we've got going on over here. So first off, the idea here is this is going to break down over time. Now it may take it a little while. Um, some of the larger or longer branches anyway is gonna dry out. We can just kind of break them up. Uh, and the weeds and everything, of course, will also dry up and break down as well. Now, we understand that there is a risk, of course, having weeds growing in the garden space uh, as we use this for uh, whether it's mulching or bottom filling or whatever the case might be. Um, mind you, there was a lot more weeding to do back here than I anticipated. Uh, we don't do any kind of spraying back here for weeds at all, uh, mainly because, of course, obviously we have our garden space and we don't want to kill all that. The other problem, of course, that could come up also is this just became a potential home for stuff, too. So as we begin to go through it uh, until it breaks down more, we're going to have to be careful uh, with that, and we get all that. Uh, but I would rather have this here and at least try to let it break down and potentially give us something uh, that we can actually use in our garden that didn't cost us anything but some sweat and time um, than to not try it all out of fear of having to do extra weeding or fear of it just not working. Um, I'd rather try it and have that potential of actual su success. And of course, again, it didn't cost us any money. It was just time and sweat that went into it. So while she's uh, finishing up some of the uh, weeding over here uh, until I need to move that pile. So I'm gonna start harvesting some of this stuff that I can and actually removing a lot of this stuff. Uh, so again, uh, my cauliflower here has uh, decided to bolt. So it's uh, trying to flower and go to seed. But I still have one head down here that I think is actual that I think is still actually usable. So I'm gonna harvest that. Uh, some of the Brussels sprouts I'm gonna leave in for now, um, but they've been looking really rough lately since the temperatures have been rising. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead, leave them in for just a little bit longer. Uh, again, the broccoli has to come out. Uh, unfortunately, I'm not gonna get anything off of that. Now I do have a few uh, Brussels sprout plants on this other side. Uh, I think the pest damage is just too great combined with the rising temperatures that uh, I'm not going to get anything really out of them and unfortunately the same is true for some of the cabbage as well I do actually have one small cabbage I'm going to get so it's my first time actually trying to grow cabbage technically my second time really uh, first time I've actually gotten any heads that have formed I'm still okay with all that. And of course, the spinach, which unfortunately is also going to seed. I should still be able to, I think, harvest some of it. Uh, there's some of it that hasn't really bolted too hard, but most of it actually has, I believe. I'm gonna try it, we'll see what we can get out of it. Now, what I'm going to do with the cauliflower here and everything that's in that bag, I'm gonna go ahead and just cut it right off at the ground. Um, and of course, that's just gonna go into our little composting brush pile over here. But I'm not gonna pull the roots out just yet. Um, I've seen other people do that. And I guess leaving the roots in can still continue to actually help with the soil health. So I'm just gonna go ahead and try that. I'll probably still end up having to pull them out uh, once it's time to actually replant in there. We'll see what happens.
tiny, but it's usable. I think that's gonna do it for us today. It's getting later on in the evening. We still have dinner to figure out and whatnot. Uh, I did get uh, a, a small thing of sweet basil uh, started, so I should have sprouts here shortly. Uh, if you saw my last video, uh, you know I'm planning on taking some of that basil and actually putting it in with the tomatoes and do some companion growing. Um, so I've got six cells that I've started. Probably two will end up being planted with the tomatoes. Uh, I don't want to overdo it necessarily, uh, but we'll see what happens. I may put a few more in there, but right now I'm still leaning towards having like two of those. Um, of course, we got most of the actual yard work done as far as weeding and cutting the grass and got most of the brush cut down to reasonable uh, sizes, more manageable sizes at least. And essentially this is kind of going to be like a composting brush pile, I guess you could say, that uh, as stuff, you know, breaks down, uh, some of it's, of course, going to dry up a bit. Uh, it will be getting uh, some water added to it, obviously, with the sprinkler system that I have at the moment. Um, as a matter of fact, that's actually going to be one of the next big projects is getting a water system actually set up. I still have some measurements that I need to take and figure out exactly the layout that I want. Um, I do have some of the line that I'm going to be using. Um, there's just some additional lines. I think I'm just going to use the uh, perforated uh, watering lines that just kind of spray out. Uh, and for the most part, uh, think of it almost like a curtain of lights where you have a main string and then you have your lights that come down and they're just kind of hanging loose. Kind of that same kind of a layout, but obviously water lines. And the reason I think I'm going to go that route is you can move those a little easier because we're constantly, you know, shifting and moving bags back here. Um, speaking of bags, that's Actually, another thing is, for the time being, I don't know that we're actually going to be picking up any more of the 30-gallon bags. Um, I think I'm actually going to start just uh, focusing on like five and 10-gallon bags. Uh, one, it's more manageable, and two, I have plenty of 30-gallon bags. Um, I have one that we actually have weeds and stuff sitting in. Um, and then we have eight that are now not being used uh, because we cut out uh, all the brassica type plants and things of that nature that was either uh, damaged by pests or you know the warming temperatures. Uh, it's just it's past their season. Uh, so I have plenty of 30 gallon bags. I'm actually thinking we're going to be using those for corn, which I believe we're actually going to put up alongside the house, uh, you know, on the grass side, uh, but up a closer to the house. Uh, otherwise, most everything else we do um, is going to be a combination of swapping out with what's already in the 30 gallon bags and any new bags, like I said, five and 10 gallon bags. Uh, 
one thing that we were actually talking about was potentially actually kind of reducing the variety of things that we're growing um, at the moment. I think part of it's just a matter of we're kind of in the beginning of one season and at the end of another, and so we're having some overlap. Um, but I, had quite a few different varieties of plants going all at once and what we've been experiencing is we'll have you know some fruits uh, and vegetables that we will harvest but it's only like a handful from this and a handful from that um, versus like a whole bunch of one thing so if you watched my last video you know I just planted 30 tomato plants uh, so with any luck we'll have a lot of tomatoes um, I am, of course, doing cucumbers and various peppers and various, a couple of different melons, watermelon and cantaloupe. Um, I still want to do some okra, but I think I'm going to try to kind of keep it somewhat contained in the sense of uh, growing just a handful of varieties instead of uh, just a bunch of different varieties, but a little bit of it. So I want to grow a bunch, but minimize the different variety type. And I think what that's going to do is it's, uh, if we get lucky enough and have a decent harvest, it's going to force us to actually start to really getting into the preservation side. Now I do want to play around with some canning and stuff beforehand, uh, hopefully in the next upcoming weeks maybe. But um, what brought this all on, of course, we were talking about the peas and I have two little pea, pa uh, pea plants. And we get a few pods here and there, and we've just been eating them right off the pea plant. Uh, they're actually quite tasty. But we actually don't get enough to actually do anything really major with it, whether it's uh, cooking a meal with them or whether it's uh, trying to can or preserve them in any way. We're just not getting enough. And for us to actually get enough to do that, we'd essentially have to have like an entire trellis of peas planted to get enough to actually do anything with. Um, so that's kind of what brought that conversation on was just actually growing more of specific things instead of trying to just grow more variety, uh, if that makes any sense. So anyway, that'll do it for us today. Uh, thank you for hanging out with us and watching us garden and do yard work, mostly yard work. We had to get this backyard cleaned up pretty well. Uh, it helps when you like being in the area that you're gardening in. Um, you want to spend more time out there. So that was the big thing is we just, we needed to get it cleaned up. If nothing else, just for our own uh, pleasure, I guess you could say. So anyway, thank you for subscribing and thank you for supporting us so far. Uh, you guys are what's been keeping this channel growing and uh, we really appreciate that. And that's going to do it. See you on the next one.